Hello everybody, welcome back to the Craft Beer Hub. I am in the beating heart of Malta's original craft brewery. And I'm with Samuel. Hey, one hey guys. Of, uh, one of the guys that originally started it way back in... 2014. 2014. We, are, we introduced the, the beer for the, first, for the first time, the craft beer in Malta. So we say that we are the pioneer of the craft beer that we, ju- we launched in 2014, July 2014. And during that time, uh, we brew three beers. One beer per, inspired by one place, uh, local place uh, on the three islands, Gozo, Comino, and Malta. So we launched Blue Lagoon, our wheat beer, inspired by Comino Island, Golden Bay, our blonde ale, inspired by San Bla- uh, Malta, and uh, uh, San Blas. There we go. And the beer that started it all was the IPA. Was it? What was the first beer that started it for? We started with one of the three beers that we started was the English IPA San Blas, inspired by San Blas uh, in, in Gozo. Brilliant. Okay, so we're going to take a little look around. First, just want to point off something here that made me laugh on one of the fridge doors. Because no good story ever started with someone smoking hops. There we go. Right. Samuel's a busy guy. If, if his chops and cuts, his phones, he's, he's a busy guy. Um, so I'll edit all this out, but just to li- give you a little warning if it chops and changes. Um, right. Should we make so, a start? Yeah. Here we have a cold room where we store part of the hops malted barley, yeast, so some, some of the ingredients that we want to, call, to keep it cold uh, to increase the shelf life. Our hops are imported uh, from US, we have some uh, European hops, uh, English, uh, German and French hops, and the yeast uh, is coming from Italy and Belgium as well. Plus we have other, uh, some, uh, we're using some local ingredients, we're using local orange and lemon peels from San Blas Valley, where you, we used in the past the local honey, to make uh, our honey winter ale and the original recipe of silver, our, our citrus pale ale. And then uh, um, we also uh, use local strawberries uh, uh, to make our sour. Yes. So can I ask, obviously, Malta, I was just speaking with your partner, actually. We were talking about your malt. What do you do with your malt? Obviously, malt is maybe not the best place to grow malt. Uh, what, what malt do you buy? Is it German? Is it European? Yes, yep. we are using German malted barley. Uh, the problem is obviously the, sp- the place is, is quite small uh, as an island, so yeah. to grow barley uh, for our sustainability we need a lot of barley. But the problem is make a, a malted barley. The machine that you need to buy and the investment you have to make, uh, it's insane, even for a small brewery like us, that we are not a nano, we are not a micro, nano micro brewer. We are, we are in a quite average scale because our maximum year of capacity production is around 2,500 hectoliters per year. So uh, we can reach a quite good amount of beer. Because you're every, I mean, it's worth mentioning, you talk about not being, yeah, to not being the biggest brewery, but you're everywhere on the island. Like they are in every pub, <coughs> bottle shop, restaurant that I've been in in nearly a week. Um, the Lord Chambray beers are in the fridges and on the shelves. So you've probably got quite a big audience to satisfy. T- big tourism audience? Yes, yeah, but also local, uh, local people. So our, one of our best clients are the Maltese. So we have a lot of Maltese as a follower of Lord Chambray and tourists as well. But uh, again, we've been here for nine years. Uh, a business. Uh, a startup is up to the fifth and sixth year. So now after nine years, I would say that we are not anymore a startup. <laughs> so it takes time for any business to grow in your sector, to, to find more loyalty customer, you need time. Uh, unfortunately, we're not running for the 200 meters, but our p- project is a marathon. So it's a long-term project. Fantastic. And obviously, um, I don't want to mention the lager, the name of the big mm-hmm. lager in uh, Malta in this brewery, but changing attitudes changing the mindset and habits has that been a difficult thing for you guys to do or is it a different market because the big lagers out here they're aimed at not pe- not craft beer drinkers mm. no uh, but at the same time I'm a very honest and uh, compared with a lot of uh, industrial beer companies all over the world uh, uh, here in particular in Malta, the industrial beer is managed, still managed by a, a local family. Yeah. So it's still uh, uh, managed by a family. So they're doing a, a lager that is part of the culture, of yes. the Maltese culture. So 
when I opened the brewery, my approach was not follow the leader, but unfollow the leader. And so this is why we start making IPAs and we start making A's, so top fermented beer and not bottle fermented like lager. We are making a, an alternative lager. We yeah. are brewing a, a Köln style beer. So it's a top fermented German style lager. Uh, that is called Coral Cave that is doing very well. It's very good. I had quite a few. I landed on Thursday. I went to the pop bottle shop, yeah. spoke to Miguel there. It probably was in a previous video now, and he got me drunk on Coral Cave. <laughs> it's very easy drinking, actually. Yes. Right, should we take a look at the brewery? Yeah, no problem. So here we are in the Lord Chambray Laboratory. Now, a lot of you will know me. A lot of this is going to go well over my head. But I'll leave this very clever gentleman to tell you all about what's happening. So one of our uh, aim goals, uh, when you make uh, a craft beer, uh, a lot of people, they are promoting their craft beer saying we are using the best ingredients available on the market. On the market there are still a lot of good uh, uh, raw materials, malted barley, uh, hops, you find a, a, a very good uh, raw materials, but the secret for the, cons for the consistency of, of for a craft beer and for the quality products is a laboratory. You can buy the best raw materials, but without a laboratory, you can guarantee the consistency and the quality of our product. So this is why, from the beginning, we bought uh, uh, and we implemented in the, in the coming years a good machine from Anton Park, the best equipment in the market for uh, anal to analyze the beer. So we have an alkalizer from Anton Park that is we can analyze the alcohol content, we can analyze the uh, kilocalories of the beer. We have microscope because we, we can check the vitality of the yeast uh, during the, the fermentation, when we, when we bottle in the beer, and also for the shelf life project. We have uh, an incubator where we analyze, uh, we can analyze, uh, and we, we do this, the, the, the shelf life test, uh, and we can do also microbiological analysis. And then we, the recent acquisition that I'm very proud to share is the C box from Anton Parr. So this is the CO2 and O2 analyzer. So with this machine, we can also analyze the level of oxidation inside each box. Oh. Clever. <laughs> like I say, well over my head, but I've now there's some home brewers on here that watch a lot of my stuff. Um, so they would appreciate that. Right, should we yeah. head down into the beating heart of the brewery? Okay, we're right at the back of the brewery now. We're gonna start from the start of the brewing process, what Lord Chambray do here. 99.9% .9 of beer is water, which is normally great if you're from the UK and you're from Yorkshire or Wales or anywhere that's got fantastic brewing water. In Malta, big problem. Big problem. Uh, yes, we are not the likest country in the world uh, for the water. Uh, the water here is the desalinized water, so since the hardness is quite high, we have to, we, we bought from the beginning, from 2014, a reverse osmosis plant. So we have a reverse osmosis where we can make a neutral profile of the water, and then we recreate the profile of the water in accordance with the style of the beer. So there are some beers oh. where we have to increase. So every beer, Fantastic. in theory, has uh, his own uh, profile. Inside our brewery, we have a minimum two different profile, different profile of water for all the IPAs, the hoppy beer, and for the beer, not so hoppy beer, like uh, our Kern uh, or the lager that we did uh, in collaboration with Toul uh, last year. Brilliant, so yeah, so from my understanding, obviously reverse os the, 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 it's a reverse osmosis process, and they take the seawater? So we're using the government water, the tap water, that is, uh, is uh, supplied by Water Service Corporation in Malta, that is a desalinized water with a high content of chlorine inside because they had to add yeah. a lot of chlorine. So here basically it's coming the water. We add a little bit of chlorine to make sure that there are no bacteria. Then we dechlorinated the water with the carbon, then we have a, a carbon filter, then the water passed through the reverse osmosis. We made uh, 500, 500 liters per hour of reverse osmosis. Then the water has been already is, uh, uh, treated again with the chlorine, dechlorinated. Then we have a microfilter at 0.2 micron to make sure that there are no any bacteria passing through the line. And then the, the osmosis water we're using for all, uh, for all the work. So for bottling, uh, for to wash the, ca the, the tanks, for wa washing cycle. But then for brewing process, uh, we recreate the proof, as I said, yep. adding different mineral salts. Uh like salt, uh, salt and calcium, uh, magnesium. There we go, big job. Right, let's go into, do you call it the mash? 
where they mesh uh, inside our brewery we have uh, two tanks a brew house so uh, meshing and filtration in one tank and the boiling and whirp in the second one due, due to the space reason yes. ideally it was the best uh, way to have three tanks uh, brew house uh, but uh, due to the space uh, we decided to combine uh, in uh, two tanks there we go right I when I talked to Samuel, we kind of talked about picking out the interesting parts of this brewery. And this bit of kit here is interesting. So we talked about the water filtration and what Samuel and his team have to do to get the water perfect for the brewing process. Samuel, talk me through this bit of kit because this is really different to anything I've seen in the UK. So, uh, as I said before, uh, uh, most of the brewery, they have two options. One is doing normal filtration with cartridge, or the other one is also do also a long lager lagering time, so they keep the beer at cold temperature for longer time, uh, and so in that case, uh, you increase the waste of the beer, but at the same time, you make in a natural way, so just waiting uh, more weeks, you make uh, clean uh, the beer. Ideally, it's better to have, to have a horizontal uh, tank to do that, uh, bright tank. Uh, in our case, from 2017, if I don't remember wrong, it was a long time ago, I was one of the first one of, for this machinery, uh, I bought a, a centrifuge or separator. It's from an Italian brand, but now it's an American brand, SPX. Uh, so this machine is, goes very fast, it can reach up to 5,000 liters per hour, so it's a, it's a centrifuge, so during this process we can uh, clean in a mechanical way uh, during the separation the beer. So we can be called uh, unfiltered beer, so our beer is unfiltered because this is not a filtration system but it's a separator. So through our PSC uh, uh, panel we can uh, set up uh, the level of haziness of the beer so we can go very fast and clean very well or we can uh, go uh, so we can go all over so decrease the speed and clean very well or uh, go very fast and, and clean and, and leave a little bit of haziness of the beer so we can decide also in accordance with the style of the beer so if you want to make a hazy IPA we have to use the, the, the correct yeast. But then, with this machinery, we, we are allowed to pass more yeast, so we can decide the easiness of the beer. Uh, this is another part uh, of my challenge. So, one of the problems that has the craft beer is the consistency of the beer. So, with all our, all our equipment that we have inside our brewery, we try every day to reach uh, the biggest challenge for a craft brewery, that is the consistency of the beer. That uh, is what uh, the industrial beer they have. So you can have a Corona a beer in New York, in China, in UK, it always stays the same because it's a Corona. The, 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 that is the disadvantage that the craft beer doesn't have. So it's more delicate, you need to uh, store it in a proper way. But then again, with our protocol, we can maintain the consistency during our production. That's pretty cool. I'm not a brewer or a scientist, but that's pretty cool and that is the thing it, the consistency is the key like you say um and a machine that can help you do that probably costs an absolute fortune um but we were talking off camera earlier um you said you're building this this brewery is built for a marathon not a sprint and things like this can help you yes as i said you said the camera i'm very proud to be a member of camera from uh, 2016 and we've, we've been participated every summer at the Olympia, the Great British Beer Festival. Yes. Our beer. So we're also proud to be the first time that we write the history of Malta, not just locally, but abroad, uh, to be with, uh, with a Maltese beer, a craft beer in, in London, the Great British Beer Festival, where also the camera member or a friend of mine, the, the previous uh, president, Ian Garrett, came here uh, to uh, verify our process, to see that we are bottle condition and beer so we're very proud to be uh, to, to stay to to be uh, in the, the camera movement uh, and promotes uh, uh, the Maltese beer uh, abroad because that's the first time I had a Lord Chambray beer I think I got this wrong I thought it was a a, a, a lager but I think it was the wit beer Blue Lagoon Blue Lagoon in London in London yes so that's the first Lord Chambray beer I had. Neil Long, who you, I think you know Neil Long, or your wife know, ah, knows Neil Long. Yes, Neil Long. Yes. Yeah, he's one of, he's one, Lagoon, yes. he, he'll watch this, he'll watch ah, this. okay. Um, <laughs> um, he told me about Lord Chambray before GBBF, 
I drank the beer and then went so when I came to Malta I was like I have to come here and has been elected in 2016 the first with the the best with beer in all Europe we won uh, over uh, 14 international awards and in 2016 we won gold medal a European beer star in Germany so we can say that in 2016 our Blue Lagoon was the top uh, the best with beer in all Europe there we go right uh, let's go on to the bottling machine that, that thing looks quite cool Right, here we are in front of the bottling machine. The reason this thing's interesting is you don't can your beer, do you? Very no. often? No. I've only seen it in bottle. In the UK? For now. Oh, for now there's plans. Okay. I was going to say, because in the UK, um, there's been a bit of a change. So everything was canned. A lot of craft brewers are looking at now bottling again. So, talk me through that. So, uh... I'm from Italy, I'm Italian, and I'm proud also for our old technology and knowledge in, uh, of machinery, manufacturing uh, machinery. I would say that Guy is represented the Rolls Royce uh, of the bottling uh, machinery. It's been here from 2014, eh? so I, I think it looks still quite new after nine years. Um, guy, so we, we can bottle 1,800 bottles per hour. Wow. We have a microfiltration for the water. Then we wash uh, every single bottle inside. Here we wash every single bottle. Then we blow with the air from the compressor. Here we have a pre evacuation, so we remove the air from the bottle and we inject CO2. Yeah. The beer is coming from this part of the machine, so we're feeling by gravity. Doing the pre-evacuation before, uh, it helps us to reduce the, the foam when we're, uh, when we're feeling by gravity the beers. Then we have a level control to make sure if the level of the beer is the same in each bottle, so we can adjust the level and inject CO2, and we close with caps. So we have two people working here uh, when we do the bottle. Tomorrow, for example, we're in bottle. That's pretty cool. This is the stuff I like. This is why I like going to beer. Have you ever had a beer X in Liverpool? No. It's, no, it's a trade show. And you get a lot of talks by people like yourselves that know all about the machinery. And I'm a bit of a nerd with that sort of stuff. Um, that's probably the most interesting parts of the brewery. All the other stuff is very, very much um, what a lot of you would know. Um, Samuel, I'm going to go out to your lovely bar now and have a couple of beers. Thanks so much for having me. I pre Thanks. Left handed handshake. No um, yeah, let's, let's tuck into some of these beers. Boom, after that very, very good tour from Samuel, I've got myself half of a Blue Lagoon. Now this particular beer is the beer I mentioned earlier that I had at the Great British Beer Festival last year. Um, it's one of the most popular, it's one of their more permanently brewed beers. Um, let's, give it a, let's give it a nose. Very spicy, orange, citrus. Slightly malty, definitely got that kind of funk, that European funk that you expect off of these European style beers. It smells very good. I mean, it's probably, what, it's 18 degrees today. Let's go in, it probably should be a perfect beer for the occasion. Yeah, lovely and malty to begin with. Really light bodied, well carbonated keeping the beer really light and refreshing for this sort of Mediterranean heat. Well, I say heat, it's 18 degrees and I'm English for you, uh, for you foreign viewers. <laughs> I think you're probably laughing at me. Ends with a lovely light orange citrus flavor, very low bitterness, relatively dry actually relatively dry this beer but yeah it's a perfect summer beer thank you so much to everybody at lord chambray samuel samuel's partner who i've lovely partner i've just met behind the bar um yeah come and visit them they're on the island of gozo and um, not far from the port actually so i'd really recommend visiting them um fantastic beer sending it all over all over the, all over the world it's getting that it's getting that way they're really building a name for themselves and they're not going long but yeah cracking time here at lord chambray thanks so much for watching guys like and subscribe if you'd be so kind i will see you on the next one cheers